You are the very first person at the Reptarium to ever handle chicken strip. Yes, I'm heartbroken. Yes, it's terrible. And, and yes, I know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I keep doing it over and over and again with two-headed snakes. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the vlog. How is your day starting? I hope it's absolutely incredible. What do you say we head into the Reptarium? And if you remember correctly, Noah was doing a 24-hour challenge in with Bella, so I'm going to go check up on him. It's about 7.30, which means he only has about a half hour to go. Uh, hey, someone's awake. Look at you're yeah. both awake. What's yeah. going on? Bella just jumped on my head. Did she again? Oh, yeah. She loves it. She loves it up there. <laughs> How's your night? I mean, did it go okay? Ugh, she scratched me one time. Oh my gosh, she but, did get you, didn't she? Yeah, oh, she gosh. jumped on me, it was like four in the morning. Four in the morning? Yeah. Oh my god, what a way to wake up. But other than that, I slept right through it. So uh, you've got about 30 minutes left. You gonna make it this last 30 minutes? Yeah, it's easy, I just want it to be over. <laughs> Is food outside waiting for me? We'll get you breakfast. We'll get you breakfast. <laughs> Again, when he gets us that, I'll put a link in the description to his video. Uh, definitely uh, good job. I didn't think you were going to make it. I figured I was going to wake up this morning and you'd be in your bed. I wish. <laughs> okay. I wish. Well, we have a lot to do today. Noah has to finish up his 24 hours. And then tonight we open at the Reptarium. So it's going to be an absolutely amazing day. Tried to feed Verde the Anaconda a live fuzzy rat. I know I don't show live feeding, but you know I want to try to get her off of chicks. So let's go ahead and check to see if she eight. I don't see it anywhere. Oh, no, I do see it. No, darn it. I thought for a second, I was like, oh my gosh, she ate. How cool is that? But she didn't. So let's take a look at this cheeky monkey here. Oh my gosh, she's starting to go into shed again. Anacondas are so weird. She shed just a few weeks ago. She had a huge meal and now she's back in shed, which tells me that she's growing because of course when snakes shed, that means that they're growing. Basically what happens is that their outer layer of skin or that epidural layer can only stretch so far. So unlike humans that we just continue to stretch because we're elastic. Basically, these guys, when they hit the end of their stretch, they have no choice but to replace their skin, and then the skin beneath it can grow that much more. So she's growing, and that's awesome. Verde, please eat for me, little girl. Oh my gosh. Oh, by the way, uh, just between me and you, she might be getting a little special turkey for Thanksgiving. I'll talk more about that in the next week or two. One of the things we have going on today is a tour. Again, I think they're coming all the way from New York. A different family is coming from New York, so I'm excited. You guys know I love tours. I love spending time with people so we're gonna have some fun with them they should be here I think within the next five or ten minutes so you guys actually are from the New York area we are yes yeah oh my god and you guys drove all this way yeah oh my god yeah. 145 miles later oh yes. my gosh well I love you guys for it thank you for coming this way we'll show you the best time we possibly can and make it worth your while for sure and now uh, by the way I love the Bronx my favorite restaurant Amelia's on Arthur Avenue oh yeah favorite restaurant in the world so there you go <laughs> so you said you're thinking you want to you know maybe do restaurants house for a living one day, right? Yeah. That is so awesome. And you asked me about geckos. I said leopard geckos are a good start. What do you think of that guy? I think um, I'll buy a Texas scale rat snake, but I I'm choosing whatever he says. <laughs> I love it. He's passionate just like me. This is awesome. So you said that you've held a corn snake and a milk snake before, right? Yeah. But this is definitely the first big snake that he's held. So I figured it's a great opportunity to take out something like Sunrise. That's a really good bigger snake to handle, but is really easy to handle. <laughs> You're doing good. She's heavy, isn't she? Yeah. You guys are about to witness a first here. You ready? Yeah. You are the very first person at the Reptarium to ever handle chicken strip besides me. I've never let anyone handle chicken strip and you get the opportunity to because he's just chilling out. But look at how he's really becoming docile. Oh, it's okay. You did really good. Look at that. Chicken strip is doing so good. What a beautiful animal. That's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll definitely make this on my bucket list to get this. So we had a really good time. These guys are going to come back tonight after four, right? Hang yep. out with me tonight so it's cool and you're good. Keep that passion. You're amazing. I love this. I mean, he reminds me of me when I was a kid. That's why I had so much fun with him. So I'll see you guys in a little bit, okay? Okay. Right, cool. Thanks, guys. Bye. What a great kid. I mean, I absolutely loved his enthusiasm. His dad was super cool, too, so we had a really good time. Oh, my gosh. A couple hours before the Reptarium opens. Let's go ahead and head over to BHB. Okay, guys, so get ready for a sad story. 
You're not gonna see tears from me this time. Uh, this was something that I really knew was coming. So this didn't take me by surprise at all. As a matter of fact, this morning I got up and I thought I was gonna do a video to you guys saying that I was very concerned with cookies and cream because I've been working with snakes long enough to know the signs of when things are really turning bad. I had told you in the past that we were assist feeding cookies and cream three times a week, just a pinky head, and it was taking it down. And I had pretty high hopes that things were gonna go well. Well, well, over the last four or five days, we started to notice the thing that I've seen with baby snakes that aren't doing well. And basically what it is is that even with food going in, they're starting to lose weight rapidly. So cookies and cream went from looking pretty good, not really fat, but she wasn't eating a lot on her own, to actually starting to lose weight. So I kind of was going to come to you guys and say, I, I'm not feeling good about it. I am very concerned. Well, sure enough, I came in this morning and, and I wanna warn you right now, number one, if you don't wanna see this, please click off or fast forward about 10 or 15 seconds. I'm gonna just show you what I came into today because I do wanna share this with you. And again, yes, I'm heartbroken. Yes, it's terrible and it sucks really, really bad. But sure enough, I came in this morning and Cookies and Cream had thrown up what we assist fed her yesterday. And by the way, we did assist feed her a slightly larger meal. She took it down herself. Yesterday, when I looked at her, like I said, I was concerned because even with her taking it down, it just didn't look right. Oftentimes when a snake starts to lose weight and it can't properly use the nutrition to grow, they'll actually start to rot in their gut and things like that happen. Again, I was gonna come to you guys today and say, guys, I'm not feeling too good about this. She did eat, but listen, it's not looking promising for the future. And I've told you guys right from the beginning that I knew that it was an uphill battle with this particular snake because it didn't really look that great, but I was willing to take the chance. And yes, I know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I keep doing it over and over and again with two-headed snakes because I just love them. I've always been fascinated with them my whole life. And yes, it keeps ending the same way with them not making it. I understand. Now, this is why it's not completely a horrible, sad story that I'm sharing with you. Yes, it sucks, and yes, I'm devastated, but I'm not crying about it because I kind of knew it was coming. I knew from the start that there was about a 10% chance that this animal would live. With that being said, I was kind of keeping something from you guys, and with this situation, I want to now share it with you guys. Next week, I'm actually picking up a two-headed snake. And I know what you guys are thinking right now, like what is this guy out of his mind? He's now lost every two-headed snake he's ever purchased. Why in the world would I buy another two-headed snake? Well, let me explain. A good friend of mine produced this snake three years ago. He has a pretty sizable reptile collection and this was his pet. He had never shown it to anyone, doesn't do social media, he wholesales only to the pet trade. And I've known about this snake for the last three years. It's a California king snake, and I've been begging him to buy it for the last three years. Well, he reached out to me about a month ago, saw the pictures and videos of the Reptarium, and finally said, Brian, this snake belongs in the Reptarium. You know, it belongs somewhere where people can enjoy it, not just in my office where me and just a couple people see it every day. So guess what? Next week, I'm picking this snake up. So the difference between the animals I've had in the past and the snake that I'm about to get is the fact that it's established. It's an adult. It's grown from that baby size all the way to adult, which tells me that there's not other congenital issues. Once a two-headed snake makes it past that like fuzzy mouse stage, it will typically live 12 to 15 years. This animal is obviously bulletproof. It absolutely is amazing. And I, again, wanted a two-headed snake at the Reptarium for people to come in and see and while right now I'm devastated that Cookies and Cream didn't make it because we put so much energy into that particular animal and I just really felt like I could get it to go. The fact is the cards were stacked against me from day one with this animal. Not only are two-headed snakes very, very temperamental, but this particular snake didn't look that great to begin with. As a matter of fact, the week I picked Cookies and Cream up, a couple in Pennsylvania produced a two-headed albino corn snake that ended up eating on its own 
and about a month and a half later actually perished. They reached out to me. They were devastated. I felt so bad for them because I knew what it was. And that was an animal that was actually eating and doing well. But once they get past that baby stage and get into sub-adult and then adult stage, they are bulletproof and they are just like any other snake. So I couldn't be more excited to share this with you. Yes, I wanted to kind of surprise you guys because I've known about this for about a month. But I didn't want to hold off now. I don't want this to be a sad story and me crying and feeling bad. I wanted to say, hey, we tried. We tried hard. We did everything we could possibly do to keep cookies and cream alive. And it was just stacked against us, guys. There was nothing we could do. I mean, I am here to tell you, I don't think anyone could have kept this animal alive any longer than we did. Lori, myself, the crew put so much energy into trying to keep them alive and it just wasn't gonna happen. I knew this was coming. Again, I was gonna make a video today telling you guys, hey, in the next few days, I don't think things are gonna look good. And it happened today. So there it is, guys, yes. I'm still bummed out. Yes, it sucks. And yes, I guess I am insane because I'm about to go down that road again. But this time, the road is a completely different road because it's a two-headed snake that's an adult that's three years old. And I have no doubt that you guys are gonna be able to come to the Reptarium and get to interact with this unbelievable animal. And my vision of eventually having a two-headed snake at the Reptarium is now going to be a reality this week. I'm not sure what day we're going, but it will be next week. So I will take you guys along on the journey to go down there, pick it up. We can decide what to name it if we so choose to change its name. So there it is, guys. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I'm gonna be crying the rest of the day because again, from the very start, I knew this was coming. We are opening up next door at the Reptarium tonight. I'm not gonna have this ruin my night. It is what it is. It sucks. It's horrible. I wish something else could have happened, but I know in my heart of hearts, I did everything I possibly could do, and that's all I can do. So there it is, guys. I mean, I, I wanted to share that with you. I'm sorry I had to show you. I just wanted to show you what happened today and that it just happened, and I wanted to share it with you. So I'm gonna collect myself a little bit. I'm gonna head over to the Reptarium. I'm gonna try to have the best night possible tonight, and I'm gonna try to wake up tomorrow and know that I can look forward to having a healthy, happy, adult, two-headed snake in the Reptarium within the next few days. Okay, so there it is. Let's, uh, let's get together and let's get over to the Reptarium. You can view it tonight, cause I'm doing a 24-hour challenge. And wait, what, what? Where am I gonna do it at? It took a few to kind of get in the groove tonight with people coming in. You know, don't get me wrong, I was so happy to see everyone. We had a really good time, but uh, it didn't feel right in the vlog to somehow like be like all happy-go-lucky. So I literally just didn't really do much of vlogging when people were here. But nevertheless, it was a successful night. Things went well, we had a good time. Uh, I just, I don't know, you know you know the situation. It, it stinks, I mean, it's terrible. As much as I knew it was coming and as much of a risk as I knew I was taking, it still feels horrible to lose an animal. I don't care what it is, especially when it's something like cookies and cream. Um, I don't know what else to say other than the fact that you know the story, you know the gig. I've been telling you from the day one, if you followed the vlog from the day I got it, I told you that there was a better chance it wasn't gonna make it than actually making it. I've been saying all along that there's about a 10% chance that this animal is gonna live past baby, so. So I'm just gonna go ahead and end the vlog here. Wish you guys an amazing day and let you know that things are gonna be okay. Don't worry about me, I appreciate it. I was ready for this, I mentally prepared for this. So I will be fine. I'm sorry to you guys, I hope I didn't let you down. I tried my absolute best to do the best I could for cookies and cream. I really did have this vision in my head, like what if it makes it and it's 10 years old and I can show people. In the meantime, we do have another two-headed snake, the one I showed you. It's gonna be amazing. People are gonna come in just to see that snake and then we can change their perception about other animals so it's a good thing I'll be okay everything's gonna work out and I just wish you guys an absolutely amazing day thank you for always understanding when these things happen thank you for not attacking me like somehow I'm the problem or that somehow I killed an animal I mean I appreciate you guys always being so kind to me and with that said I'm just gonna go ahead and end thing can you do me a favor can you be kind to someone today and I promise I will see you guys tomorrow with what I hope is a happy vlog